joining us. Long time North Central Conference rivals North Dakota State and North Dakota meet for the first time as Missouri Valley Football Conference opponents this Saturday. Game time, 2.30 at Gate City Bank Field at the Fargo Dome. This is the first conference matchup between the two football programs since 2003, if I'm not mistaken. The Bison won the Great West in 2003, but that's, well, that's challenging the memory right there. Anyway, it's just great that we're talking about this game and that it's such a huge rivalry and that it's back. And to give us a little bit more color and flavor of the football game coming up and other news coming out of the Bison camp today, would you please welcome back to KFGO, the television voice of the Thundering Herd, Mr. Brian Sean. Hi, Brian. Hey, what's up, Dano? How are you today? Super, super. I saw you down on the football field uh, doing your open for the pregame and the start of the game, uh, and I know you were upstairs at uh, some point. How did it go getting back in the booth last weekend? Oh, it went awesome. It, it felt so good. It, it was good for my mental health, too, I think, just to get, get back into a routine and doing something I enjoy so much. And, uh, you know, I didn't have any issues. I felt like myself. I, I still feel like myself. Um, so that was, that was really good. I'm excited to get back at it again this Saturday. Yeah, that's great to hear Brian. Well, yeah, let's jump in. Uh, boy, what a matchup. Two top five teams in FCS football are squaring off at the Fargo dome on Saturday afternoon. Brian, I'm not sure what you think is the biggest story going in, but one of them has got to be that, uh, UND is at a higher level, I think, than people thought they were going to be at this point do you think that's true or not yeah yeah i think so i i and quite frankly you know i i actually just talked with UND's offensive coordinator danny Floyd this afternoon and we kind of talked about that about you know where they're at and you know he had said they they had a different vibe a really good positive vibe and and it was just a solid group they weren't sure if that was going to translate to the field but it has and a lot of things have just worked out really well and and their guys have have completely bought in and you know what? They're playing much better on the offensive and defensive lines. And, and ultimately, if you want to compete in the Valley, you have to be able to win up front. You got to be able to move people. You got to be able to run the ball. You'll be able to stop the run. And they've shown the ability to do that the first four games. And that's uh, that's going to be the challenge again. I think this weekend is is who can win the battle up front between NDSU and UND. And and I think both coaching staffs are interested to see how their kids respond to that. And it'll be a good test uh, for each group. And and we'll find out what happens. Uh, I tell you what, uh, you know, that's where the game is played. You know, we all get stars in our eyes and we watch the football and the running backs and et cetera are the uh, big stars in, uh, of the game and everything. But the game is played up front, as most of us all very well know. And, yeah, UND's offense and defensive lines have really been making a difference this year. Meanwhile, North Dakota State's got a little youth going for them, not only in the line, but, you know, all over that lineup. You know, and I was it was interesting, Dan, at the end of the game. Here, here we have NDSU up by a point, driving the field, and they have a freshman at tackle. They have a freshman at guard. They have a freshman at quarterback. They have a freshman at running back. You know, when's the last time NDSU has had to do that? I mean, they have freshman other spots. I mean, yep. two freshman wide receivers were on the field at time. When's the last time that that's happened? Like, when's the last time NDSU has had to rely on 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 kids that young? Uh, you know, to, to play pivotal roles and crunch time in football games you know that that's the that's where this program is right now because of uh, of how everything transpired in the fall and some of the losses on the roster and some of the seniors that decided to move on with life and that that's part of the deal so um you know i, I think they're getting better every week I, I think talking to some of the players today they they see the improvements from week to week guys are growing up they're going to be better for it down the road getting all these game reps and that's what i think you have to remember uh, if you're, you know, you're a fan watching this game is, uh, yeah, guys are going to have to go through some things and learn some things and get better and, and improve from some of the mistakes they make. And the one thing you can always control is how hard you play, Dan. And I think both teams will play hard. I agree with that. Uh, when you're doing the game on Saturday afternoon, Brian, were you, uh, how, how surprised were you that Zeb Nolan got sat down? Well, you know, I don't, it's hard. It, it was one of those things where we were kind of wondering if they would try to ride a hot hand instead of switching quarterbacks every series. And, and that may be the situation here, at least even this week or even throughout the rest of the season is, you know, who's going to start, who's going to play. We don't really know. They might still play them both and see who gets the hot hand and just kind of ride that hot hand, Dan. I mean, that's, 
That's the name of the game of football. You, the one thing I will say is this, though, talking to Tyler Roll last week, and I'm going to talk to him again this week, is he goes, we have to still be able to move the football through the air if we're going to be successful. We have to be able to do that. So I think they're going to find the guy that is the most consistent, the guy that maybe gives them the best chance of, of doing some things. Cam Miller, the young freshman, showed a lot of poise, I thought, did a nice job uh, scrambling out of the pocket and making some plays with his feet. I thought Zed Nolan moved the offense really well early in the game and had they converted that fourth and goal at the half yard line and it's right. a 21 nothing game, maybe we're not even talking about that. So, you know, again, coaches are trying to do everything they can to figure out ways to keep the program moving forward. And ultimately on Saturday, we'll find out what happens at quarterback and see who's out there the most. You know, and I, I, I don't know what you think about this, Brian, but I've, I don't think I can remember ever seeing a situation where shuttled quarterbacks on an offense worked uh, at any level. Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that, Dan, uh, because Matt Ants brought that up in his press conference. And Joe Bishorner, who was an associate head coach, offensive guy uh, at Mankato, I believe is where he came from, is now the running backs coach at NDSU. And he took Mankato all the way to the national title game when they had dual quarterbacks going mm-hmm. in in every other series. So okay. there was one situation where it did work. And norm- I don't think any coach wants to go into – a season, any kind of season, especially this weird spring season, and alternate quarterbacks. I mean, that's not ideal, right? You want to get in a rhythm and find a guy and just go. But this is not a normal season. <laughs> well, no doubt. So I think this, you know, this is something I think NDSU, they're just trying to find whoever has the hot hand and the spark to try to keep things moving forward because of all the, the new pieces and all the newness across the board. And you know what? <laughs> things were already kind of lean. Uh, when we started the season, but uh, then losing Seth Wilson on the second play uh, of the season, <clears throat> forcing a lot of these other young guys to go into the backfield. Now, now that said, boy, have I been impressed, especially by this uh, uh, Dominic Ganella. Wow, is he yeah. really – and this guy's a true freshman. The guy's built like Tarzan. Yeah, he is. I mean, he is a thick dude. When I saw him up close on the field. I was like, wow, it just it blows you away. And – there's a reason why he was like, he, you know, he's he's got a, a professional baseball future potentially down the road too. He's a draft pick of the Colorado Rockies. I don't know if a lot of people know that. Right. But his dad played D1 baseball. His brother played D1 baseball. Um, he's a really good baseball player on top of it, on top of being a really good football player. And that was part of the reason he chose NDSU is they were going to allow him to still do some baseball stuff in the summer, uh, you know, and, and look at that. Um, he wants to play college football for four or five years and then to move on to that level of his life and he didn't want to pick one sport or the other and you can see why NDSU was willing to let the kid do sure. it because he, he works really hard <laughs> yeah he fits in and you can you can see what he does on the field it's awfully impressive for a kid that's 18 years old you watch uh, this weekend <clears throat> when you watch the game uh he wears number 29 his name is Dominique Ganella and he's really something extraordinary on the other side of that football Tommy Schuster has been named the Missouri Valley Football Conference offensive player of the week he's the quarterback for the UND Fighting Hawks but he looked great on Saturday he did I, you know he's getting more and more comfortable and you know when you look at him he's six foot 190 pounds you don't you know he's not the big he doesn't stand out as one of those prototypical quarterbacks that you would see in the backfield but he he's got a lot of the intangibles Dan that that you can't teach a kid you know he has a very calm presence on the field, whether things are going well or not well. And I think as a coach, he just, he feels pressure. He knows when to get out of danger. He knows when to throw the ball away. And, you know, and Matt, i said it too. They're putting him in, in, in these positions to be successful. If you can run the ball and run a lot of play action, roll him out of the pocket, get him to spots on the field where he can make the throws uh, that he's comfortable with, then, you know, a lot of things can go well. And, and confidence is such a big part of it. And he's playing confident he should be. He's completing 70% of his passes. They've been very efficient offensively. He hasn't forced anything, uh, taking pretty good care of the football. And I think that's that's going to be the biggest thing, I think, for North Dakota offensively here on Saturday is taking care of the football, not giving any issue short fields to work from, and then, you know, establishing the line of scrimmage and trying to move it. And Tommy's got four years or three more years to play. He's only a redshirt freshman, so uh, he's going to be quarterbacking uh, the uh, Fighting Hawks for some time. So kickoff is 2.30 on Saturday afternoon, and KVOY will have the television coverage. Uh, Brian Sean back in the saddle. Uh, That's coming up Saturday afternoon, 2.30 from the Fargo Dome. Uh, Two top five teams in FCS football squaring off. While we've just got a moment left, Brian, uh, 
Odell Wilson entered the transfer portal up at North Dakota State University. Were you surprised by that? Um, you know, yes and no. I, you know, and Donald Carter actually did today too. Uh, oh. Another guard that that sure. had uh, that had a really traumatic leg injury that he was trying to come back from from last summer. And you know, I think these guys just want to find and again. You have four or five years to play college basketball before your eligibility is up. I think they both have done everything they can. I've heard nothing but good things about both of those guys from the coaches. They were really good teammates, worked extremely hard. Um, I mean, love those kids. But if your goal is to play, sometimes you got to move on to get that opportunity, whether it's playing at a lower level or just going to a, a different program that um, maybe fits what you do well. And so for those guys, uh, I think they just, they you know, the clock is running. They, they want to get as many minutes on the floor as they can. Uh, I appreciate their time here, but uh, ultimately that's what it comes down to. And I think Coach Richmond, too, does a really good job of being honest with his guys and saying, look, we love you. We love having you be part of this. We love our culture here, and we love having you be a part of that. But if you want to play, you know, somewhere else may be better for you. And, look, you know, you appreciate the honesty, and if the guys want to stay and, and play their role, I think they're happy to have them. If they don't, um, you know, they can maybe find a different opportunity somewhere they can get that. Well said. Brian, Sean, so glad you're feeling good, Brian. That is just great news. Uh, yeah, it is, man. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, Absolutely. I bet. But Jess is happy about that, too. Uh, Brian, thanks so very much. I hope I get a chance to see you. I'm trying to keep my distance from you. You know, I don't <laughs> want to give you any germs or anything like that, but I hope I'll at least get a chance to wave at you from up in, up top of the Fargo Dome on Saturday. Yeah, let's make sure we do that, Daniel. Right. <laughs> Brian, thanks so very much. You have a wonderful evening, and take care. Hey, you guys, too. Thank you. Okay. Brian Shaw on the television voice of the Thundering Herd for KVOY and Midco Sports Net joining us this afternoon as we're getting ready for a huge football game. Saturday afternoon, 2.30 at the Fargo Dome. You're listening to The Drive with Dan Michaels on the Mighty 790 and 1047 KFGO.